Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed the wonderful lunch. Uh, uh, always wondering, worried about having enough food, but there was plenty of food, and it was excellent. So uh, I think it was the Bamboo House, so if you're in Providence, you may want to uh, have another uh, try at it. Uh, anyway, uh, we're very pleased that an uh, important representative of the Cambodian government uh, is here to um, basically, I think, thank us for what we're doing and to maybe say a few words. So in order to introduce him, uh, I want to bring on the podium Mok Nemen, uh, who will tell us a little bit about who our honored guest is. Well, first of all, I would like to say uh, thank you to Dr. Ron Weisberger and uh, Raxmay Pence for organizing the first Cambodian genocide at Bristol Community College. I also want to say thank you to uh, President Sprager uh, for allowing the intellectual conversation to take place on such an important topics, historical topics. And lastly, I want to say thank you to Steve Ozox and our campus, uh, campus police officer and Wayne Wood, the chief, for their hard work to make today is possible. Now, Dr. Hunmanites was born on October 20, 1977, was during the genocide that took place in Cambodia, in Kothma village in Memut district, Kampong Cham, province in Cambodia, during the Khmer Rouge. He received his general education in Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia, and later joined the Royal Cambodian Armed Force in 1995, which was the same year he entered the United States Military Academy. He was the first Cambodians to graduate from West Point in 1999. He was one of the seven foreign cadets to graduate that year. From West Point, he went on to New York University and received his master's degree in economics in 2003, then a doctoral degree in economics from Bristol, from University of Bristol in the United Kingdom in 2008. Dr. Hulmanets was appointed as the commander of Cambodian National Counterterrorism Special Force in 2008 and was responsible for helping build Cambodia capacities to fight against terrorism. Currently, he is a Lieutenant General in the Royal Cambodian Armed Force. He is married to Germany and has two daughters, Valette and Lena. Apart from professional military duties, he is the chair of the scholarship associations, which provide scholarship opportunities to thousands of Cambodian youth to study at univers university across Cambodia. He is also the chair of the Youth Volunteer Doctor Associations, where he gathers thousands of medical professional medical students and volunteers to help provide free health care to rural Cambodians throughout the country. He promotes humanitarian activity for orphanage and for people with disabilities throughout Cambodia. On April 9, 2016, last week, he was presented with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership's Medal of Honors Award for his tireless leadership in pursuit of harmony and unity among all the people of Cambodia at home and abroad. Please help me welcome Dr. Hun Manage to Bristol Community College in Fall River, Massachusetts. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. McManan, for the kind introductions. Uh, I just feel a little bit nervous to be back in a college campus after a while. So if uh, I lost my voice somehow, please forgive me. It's a great honor for me to be here to join this first genocide conference. I understand that it's the first initiative to conduct this search conference, and I just had a, uh, a short talk uh, with President Sprega 
about this, and I hope that it could be a continue on an annual basis, because the genocide, Cambodian genocide, is not just the experience that should be learned by Cambodians, but it is the issue of humanity that should be shared for all. Any race, any nations, nationalities should learn from each other on this, so that this type of astro uh, atrocities should be avoided in the future. So uh, my thanks to President Breger and the committee for organizing this conference. This is a crucial topic because of the sheer scales and brutality of the atrocity that make this conference important. This is a time to talk, to learn, and to discuss, and to remind all of us so this kind of tragedy will never take place again. When we talk about Cambodian genocide, we refer to the period between 1975 and 1979, the darkest hour in Cambodian history, when Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge regimes turned the country backwards toward what we call year zero. The regimes turned Cambodia into an agrar agrarian society, with millions were forced to evacuate the city to the countryside overnight. Schools were closed, all forms of religious practices were banned, with temples and mosques converted into prisons, torturing and killing sites. Buddhist monks were disrobed, and Muslim Christians, as well as people of other religions, were banned from practice their religions. Free market economy was disbanded, with all forms of market transactions were banned, and the use of money was stopped. Virtually, Cambodian people uh, were forced into labor camps working in long hours with little food. The regimes targeted intellectuals, teachers, doctors, lawyers, and military personnel. Most of the intellectuals were killed under the Khmer Rouge regimes. Ordinary citizens were being starved to death Family was separated. People who survive have had li to live with scars for life. According to some estimates, approximately 1.7 million people lost their lives during that period, about 21% of the country populations then. Virtually every single Cambodian families were affected by this atrocity. The shoot scale makes it the worst Schumann tragedy in the last century. The Khmer Rouge regimes combine extremist ideology with ethnic animosity and a complete disregard for human life to produce repressions, misery, and a murder on a massive scales. Until today, many who survive still live day to day with nightmares of the past. Many of them experience post-traumatic stress disorder Many of them coping with the loss of their loved ones during this time. For these reasons, Cambodian genocide under the Khmer Rouge regimes was one of the worst tragedies in the world history. So some have argued that it was the worst because of the discriminate nature of the killings and was done to one's own race. Not only because of the enormous scale of the deaths and destructions it has caused, but also due to the miseries it had left behind for the millions of survivors of the atrocious regimes. These type of atrocities must never be allowed to happen again in Cambodia, and all Cambodian younger generations must never forget. While it is important that we are here today to remind people of the atrocious behavior of the Pol Pot Khmer Rouge regimes, it is also equally important for us to understand how did Cambodian people manage to get out of that death cat trap and get to where we are today. Looking back at the tragedy from another angle, we can see that there was also a story of hope. A hope that motivated people to put their lives on the line to rise up against oppressions. The Kampuchean People's Revolutionary Army KPRAF, established in December 1978, 
It was a symbol of unity and hope during the darkest hour of our history. It was a rallying point for Cambodian patriots, especially young men and women, from all faiths to join together to fight against tyranny and injustice. It was also a symbol of selfless sacrifice and ultimate bravery of our people who put their lives in danger and brave against all odds to rise up and eventually overthrow the Khmer Rouge genocidal regime in January 1979, which in turn put an end to our darkest chapter and opened a new chapter in our history. The task of rebuilding a country from the year zero was a daunting one. Coupled with civil war, which continued throughout the 1980s and most of the 1990s. Despite these challenges and difficulties, with a just cause combined with great efforts of Cambodians from all sides, we have succeeded in bringing our country a long way. Today, Cambodians are living in a period of total peace and stability, with total unity that have been absent from our land for about 500 years of our history. The win-win policy that finally dismantled the Khmer Rouge political and military machine in 1998 resulted in a sustainable peace. Cambodia and Cambodian people have been enjoying peace dividends. This Cambodian economy has been thriving at a very fast pace and a rapidly rising standard of living of the population. According to the World Bank, Cambodia is the 10th fa fastest growing economy among the 100 79 countries in the last decade, and the fourth fastest country in the world in poverty reduction among her populations. Cambodia has moved from low-income country to a status of low-middle-income country and has become a very attractive destination for tourism and investments. Cambodia has moved away from isolation to a country which is well integrated with the world. It is a member of the Association of Southeast Asian, as well as a member of the WTO and many more. Furthermore, Cambodia has moved from a land once known as the killing field and civil war to a land of peace and prosperity. From a country once had people immigrated to other countries to escape war and internal conflicts to a country which welcomed refugees from other countries who escaped war in their home country with open arms. From a country which received peacekeeper in the early 1990s to keep warring factions from fighting each other, to a country which has been sending troops on UN peacekeeping operations to help keep peace in other countries. These achievements and many more are the product of peace and stability that Cambodia has just obtained not long ago. Ladies and gentlemen, with the success of the extraordinary chambers in the court of Cambodia, or ECCC, so far, in bringing the key leaders of the Khmer Rouge regimes to be accountable for their crimes against humanity, Cambodia is moving closer to the closure of the darkest chapter of our history. It also provides millions of Cambodian victims and their families a sense of justice and help healed their emotional scars. Finally, the miseries caused by the Khmer Rouge atrocity also serve us as a reminder of how thankful we are today to be able to be alive and to live in peace and stability with high hope and aspiration for the future. In the same vein, probably the most valuable lessons we can learn from all of these bad experiences of the genocide era as well as the prosperity afterward, it affects that we should never take peace, stability, and national unity for granted. As centuries of our history has shown us, we could easily lose them at any given time. Therefore, Cambodians of all generations must work together to preserve peace, stability, and national unity as they are the foundation for sustaining a peaceful coexisting among all Cambodians, preventing future conflicts and ensuring further economic growth and development. To achieve this goal, Cambodians from all walks of life must come together and embrace the spirit of unity, tolerance, and understanding of one another. 
so that we can sustain peace and harmony in our society. We all should have a meaningful dialogue and we must move forward to develop countries so we all can be very proud of. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for today. And uh, again, uh, my thanks and appreciations for the initiative of, uh, for organizing this event. As I understand, there has never been this type of initiative before. And I hope this will continue so we could share our experience and broaden uh, our, uh, share our uh, Cambodian histories, Cambodian experience with all other friends. And I wish all, you all the best and thank you very much for having me. Thank you.